G'day, it's Pete here, and today I wanted to discuss what is the best signaling method to actually use. So today what I wanted to do is go through and break down uh, a few different signaling methods, just explain what they actually are, and then look at sort of what world champions do and a breakdown of that. And also an interesting idea that I think you might be asking the wrong question or where that some depth is actually needed. And I'll actually uh, touch on that later. And then also a method that might not be the best, but I reckon is a great way to actually improve your play. So let's jump in and uh, look at how a few different methods actually work. Uh, so a couple of very common methods uh, you might be playing high in courage or low in courage. So what does signaling actually mean? This is distinct from what you actually lead. Signaling is all about when your partner or someone else has led to a trick and you don't really care uh, which card you play. You're not forced to play something. Um, and you're going to be choosing between your low cards, your twos, your twos through tens, the cards that aren't going to be that relevant here. So in this example here, uh, imagine you've got king nine, six, two and partners led an ace. All right. Uh, so what do we actually do? Like we could play the nine, the six or the two, uh, which one should we play and how can we actually convey information with that? So depending on which signaling method you and your partnership actually agree on, you convey different information. Uh, so if you play low in courage, you could put the two on this to say, Hey, I actually like this suit. Or if you and your partner played high in courage, you might put the nine on to say, yeah, I like this, keep going. I actually really like it. Uh, so that's what you do if you really like the suits. Uh, if you don't like it and say we took that king away, now we'd swap that around. If you're playing low in courage, you'd play a high card to discourage. So you'd put the nine on to say, I'm not a big fan of this suit. Whereas if you played high in courage, now you'd be putting the two on instead. So... Uh, it's all signaling is all about when you're being led to, whether it's declarer or your partner and not when you're on lead. Leading is a separate situation that we're not covering today. And uh, two common ways are high and low in courage, but there are more. Um, so next we'll look at count signals. So uh, you might hear of reverse count or natural count. And these are all about conveying how many you've got in the suit. Uh, not whether you've got the ace, king, queen, jack, whether you like it or not, but do we have an even amount or do we have an odd amount? Now, uh, if you're playing reverse count, if you start by playing a low card, you're saying you have an even amount of cards. So here the two would convey to partner you've got two or four or six cards. If instead you played natural count, you'd put on the nine here and playing a high card would say you've got two, four, six cards. Nothing about the king if you're giving a count signal, all about what sort of length you've got in the suit. And you're breaking it down to, do you have an even amount or an odd amount? So if we changed it and now we only had three cards, if you played reverse count, you would be playing the nine here. And if you're playing natural count, you'd be playing the two to say, I have an odd amount, one, three, five. So these are a couple of uh, common signaling methods. Uh, they're also known by lots of different names. Um, when we go into a bit more detail later, and I'll cover a few more, I'll talk about a few different names that signaling's made from because they haven't made it confusing enough. So next I wanted to show you what a world championship system card looks like, and then talk about what actual signals they've got. So uh, here we'll actually take a look at a system card. I know it's a lot to take in. Like, what is that? All right, so I'll bring it back up. I should have given you more warning. These things are awful to look at and you should be thankful that uh, wherever you play your system cards look better than this. Uh, but we'll bring it back up and uh, we'll zoom in on signals and uh, what they actually do. Cause I wanna, it's an interesting thing about the different approach there. So here, if we just zoom in on signals in order of priority. So here, what we've actually got is rather than just saying, Hey, I play low in courage or I give natural count or whatever it is. Uh, what you've actually got is you've got this, 
uh, priority of signals. Lots of world championship players use combinations of signals. It's not just one or other, the other. They actually choose various signals for different situations. So as you can see here, we've got signals in the order of priority and it talks about partner's lead, declarer's lead, and discarding. There are distinct situations for all three of these. But also, there's what's your main priority, what's your secondary priority, and what's your third priority. And then they also split it off into suits and no trumps. So uh, not every pair has variation there. This one that we're looking at has the exact same. Other pairs break it up a bit more. And then also, if you look under that to other signals, what they've got is, well, when trumps are played, we give suit preference. And then it also talks about a bit of when does their situation change from the top priority to uh, something else. So uh, here you see if there's a singleton or void in the dummy, uh, maybe they change what their signal is. So rather than just saying what signaling method should we use, it's important to understand that uh, you actually want to be able to use a combination of these and have discussions with your partnership. When do they apply? What are we showing? And adding more depth into this rather than this system is better than that system. It's using a bit of a combination of it and having details of when these actually apply and when they don't. So I'll put that away because they are, they're, they're a tough to look at. Uh, but, uh, what are the most common signaling methods at a world championship le uh, level? So uh, let's break it up into the three main things, partner's lead, declarer's lead, and discarding. So what is the most common signaling method on partner's lead? So here with over half the field at the world championship, they are playing low in courage or high discourage. Low encourage is actually known by a few different names. Uh, you'd have reverse, low encourage, uh, high discourage. Uh, you might even see UDCA written, U-D-C-A. Um, and that means that for this situation, they're playing uh, that. So U-D-C-A, reverse, low encourage, high discourage, these all mean the same thing. Uh, there's a good portion of the field that's actually playing high in courage. So uh, you might be saying, well, I play high in courage. Should I bother switching? Again, this isn't too big of a deal. Like you can see that people are playing these different signaling methods at the highest level. These signaling methods work. You don't need to switch just because over half the world championship field plays it. But if you're working out which signaling method that you should be taking up, my top pick would be low in courage. It's... Uh, very popular even at the highest levels. If you play natural or high in courage uh, or standard, they're all names for high in courage, that's fine. Keep going with it. Whatever works for you. It's important that uh, if you're comfortable, that's more important than switching. There's world champions that don't see any benefit to switch or actually prefer doing else. But there are a few other signaling methods here chosen as well. Uh, importantly, count has taken a decent portion of the field. Um, so uh, there's both natural count and reverse count in here. And there are also some people playing suit preference. Uh, suit preference, is, I haven't mentioned yet, but suit preference is when you play a high card, it would say, hey, I like the higher one of the higher ranking suits. Um, or if I play a low card, I like one of the lower ranking suits. For instance, if spades were being played, you might play a nine to say, hey, I like hearts, or a two to say, hey, I like clubs. You would usually be discounting trumps in that as well. So uh, here, this is the popularity of what signals people like to do on your partner's lead. So what about if we move over to a uh, declarer's lead? What's most popular there? Now count has taken a huge jump. So uh, reverse count, upside down count, this is that big uh, section there. And natural count is the other large portion there. So count signals on declarer's lead are very popular. Now, what's important to know is while they say this is the signal that they do, it's important to know, well, on declarer's lead, is it actually relevant to 
uh, give that signal. And that's like a really tough challenge to do. But when you think it's appropriate, uh, most people at World Championships uh, play count signals there. And then finally, discarding is the final one. And again, low encourage takes a huge portion, uh, but suit preference has made a solid increase. Um, so it's worth noting that other people like that. Uh, there are a few people that play odds and evens, uh, which is another uh, signaling method that uh, combines low encourage and also um, suit preference together where they use an odd card to encourage um, or an even card to discourage and also give suit preference at the same time. And that seems very popular uh, at various levels because it can convey so much information. The main issue is you don't always have the right card. Whereas low encourage, you always have a low card. Now, it's not that you are saying that a two, three, four is a low card, but let's say you've got the nine and the eight, the eight is your low card. You can always discard that and hope partner can work it out. Whereas if you distinguish uh, between odd and even, you always, your cards are always odd or they're always even and you can't always change that. So at the highest levels, you don't see odds and evens as much. Low encourage is a very robust uh, signaling method. So if you're wondering uh, what signals I would recommend, I would re recommend people learn reverse. So low encourage, reverse count. This is the most popular at the highest levels and uh, will keep you in good stead the whole time. You don't really need to uh, try and change away from that. Um, if you already play a different signaling method and it's on this list, that's fine. People play this up to the highest levels, that's fine. The most important thing is adding a bit more depth of like, well, on partner's lead, are there any times that I don't actually wanna give this signal and should I change away from that? So uh, it's, you want to discuss that part of your partnership more uh, rather than thinking, oh, I play high encourage, should I switch to low encourage? Add in more detail about what your signals mean where rather than potentially overhauling your whole uh, system there. Um, I also wanted to talk about, while it wasn't the most popular, I when I was learning, my primary signal, even on partner's lead, was giving count. And I reckon this is a fantastic way uh, to improve your defending skills as a whole. It teaches you a lot more about counting on defense. So if you wanna give that a shot, rather than focusing on low encourage or high encourage, I reckon that is a fantastic way to really make your whole defensive strategy a bit more robust. Um, and you can play this at the highest levels as well. Um, and I think it's fantastic way to actually learn and improve. Um, but if you want a system that you and your partnership are just gonna stick with, low encourage on partner's lead, uh, reverse count on declarer's lead, and low encourage first discards. Very common, very robust, great signaling method. And that's what I'd recommend. Anyway, uh, thanks all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.